triple beam balance is used on Earth to calculate the mass of an object. That mass is calculated as a gravitational mass. It's exhibited by the force of attraction between, in this case, the silvered cylinder, which we're going to call the unknown, and the Earth. We cannot use this method in space, so there has to be another way. Instead, we're going to use an inertial balance. An inertial balance works on the principle of harmonic motion or vibration. It is independent of Earth's gravitational field or mass. Everything above this double line where you see the 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600 grams, that is simply the calibration of your individual inertial balance. Each of the balances in the room are slightly different. Each of the unknown masses in the room are slightly different. So our data will vary. We're going to regulate it so that we have a common key and that our graph is easy to grade. I'm going to ask that all groups use 30 cycles. A cycle is a complete back and forth path. So one, two, three, four, or you could just as easily push it away from you. One, two, three, four. That would be a complete cycle. Now I need 30 of them, so I let go of my balance with zero grams on it. Wow, that's kind of hard to watch. There has to be an easier way to do this. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a copy of the lab. If I take a copy of the lab and place it near the balance, it is easier for me to listen for 30 counts. When I get to 30, the person that has the stopwatch will tell me to quit. We're going to read the time off of the stopwatch and write it on our lab for a total time. Put 100 grams on the inertial balance, clear out your stopwatch, set up the paper, When you get to 30, stop, record the number in the chart under total time. By definition, the period is the time for one complete cycle or one back and forth path. The period in this case for our lab will be the total time divided by 30 cycles. Please do this for every box in the lab that asks for period. Take your total time in the column immediately to the left and divide by 30. After we've filled in our complete data table, the next thing we're going to do is plot period versus mass. Period is going to go on the y-axis of our graph. We will count up how many lines there are in our graph. We're going to look at the largest number in our data table for period. Divide, that will tell us the spacing. Same thing is going to happen on the x-axis. We're going to place the mass on the x-axis. I can see that my largest number is 600. I count the number of lines on my graph. Take 600, divide by that number. That will tell you how to space the graph. You're going to have some type of an expression, some type of a line that you have graphed here. In order to get the inertial mass from the graph, you find the period for the cylinder. Don't use the hanging cylinder. Find the period along the y-axis. Shoot across horizontally until it hits your graph. Draw a line down vertically until you read the number on the x-axis of the graph. In terms of finding the mass of your cylinder from the triple beam balance, that's easy, just put it on the scale and read the sliders. Last thing you have to do is compare the period of the cylinder and the hanging cylinder. You want to know if gravity affects the inertial mass and you're done.